If you've been working in IT at all, chances are you've heard about Kubernetes. It's one of the reasons that Google Cloud Platform is so popular. There's a managed service called Kubernetes Engine inside of GCP. In this episode of What the Pros Know, let's take a look at the Kubernetes Engine and actually spin up a solution inside it. Well, I got to tell you, I've enjoyed so much teaching Google Cloud Platform here at IT Pro TV with my partner in crime, Ronnie Wong. And I've asked Ronnie Wong to join us here <laughs> and Ronnie's going to help us out, get this deployed. What we're going to do is we're going to use the cloud shell. So Ronnie, I noticed you've made a connection to the cloud shell and just kind of minimized it there. This is a great way for us to use the command line interface right inside of the Google console. Now, Ronnie can certainly install the CLI for Google inside his Mac that he's using, and it'll be right in his native terminal. But if you don't have it installed and you want to just quickly get to the CLI, the Cloud Shell is a great way to do that. So, Ronnie, I know you got for us uh, out of Google's like kind of um, samples you picked a Hello World application for us that we're going to deploy inside a Kubernetes cluster. That is so cool. And I think our first step is probably to get that Git repository information and clone it down to our local machine. So notice we have a command. And by the way, we're going to share all of these commands with you via a download link in the description down below this YouTube video. So there we go. Wow, that happens quickly. Obviously, there's not much to our Hello World application, Ronnie. It's uh, got to be pretty small. And so we've got that clone now to our local system. Now, I believe we're going to go ahead and change into the directory that is our Kubernetes engine samples and the directory that's created for our application, the Hello app. So excellent. Now that we're in that hello app subdirectory. Now it's time to export uh, the uh, project ID information into the Google Cloud Shell. What's happening here is we are setting an environment variable. So we are saying that in our scripts, if we ever use project ID, go ahead and insert our Google project ID, which you can see is highlighted in yellow. It's Daring Atrium 270902. So awesome. So now that we've educated the shell as to that environment variable, now Ronnie's going to use his Docker command. And he is going to create a Docker build of our Hello World application. And he'll name that, as you can see, Hello-app. And he sticks in a version number on that build of version number one. So we're using Docker to build that. Oh, and there's a period at yeah. the end of this. Does that need to be in there? Okay. It does, Ronnie. Right. Yeah, that's fault. Um, easy. Yeah, no problem. That's easy to miss for sure. So we are now building the container that is our wonderful Hello World app. And we can see that taking place. So little bit of time here, obviously. And as you might guess, we're going to be building a cluster together inside of Kubernetes engine. So you can expect a little time on that process as well. But there we go. We have built our Docker container that is going to be our application inside of the Kubernetes engine. And it looked like everything worked beautifully there. So we're ready to move on to our next step. We can skip that one, Ronnie. That's the Docker images command would be just to verify that it worked, but we saw that it worked great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Google Cloud commands and we're going to make sure that we have the appropriate authentication permission set up to actually do the Docker configuration. So it's saying, OK, look, we've added appropriate credentials. And this is just some kind of background security permission stuff that we're taking care of. The next command up is for us to actually push 
our wonderful Docker application up to the Google Container Repository. So we have this nice repository up in Google Cloud Platform where we can go in and store our containers that represent solutions we're gonna be pushing out via Google Cloud Platform. So there we go, we just transferred our Docker image up to the container registry. So next up, Ronnie, we are going to set, make sure the, the project is set correctly. And I do believe we've got that done, but let's just follow the steps here, just in case you can never be too careful here. So we use our config set to make sure we are using that project ID variable. And of course, that we are using the correct project. Then we're gonna set the compute zone. So where are we going to be building all of this solution? And Ronnie and I today have selected the US central region and the uh, zone inside of that region. So notice that we can strategically place this solution in a region somewhere in the globe. Nice. All right, we're doing great here. Next up, we are going to actually create the, uh, the cluster that we are gonna be using for our Google uh, Kubernetes engine. So this is pretty exciting stuff. And this is the one that could take a little bit of time. So notice we are creating a cluster now for Google's Kubernetes engine. And in that command, Ronnie, can you go back to our text file? It'll be easier for us to see the command there. I see that we used the num nodes parameter and we said two. So understand that what is happening right now in the background is Google Cloud Platform is building a Kubernetes engine cluster for us and it contains two virtual nodes. So there are two VMs that are actually at work here inside of this cluster. So notice if you were spinning up some solution that was going to be heavily, heavily used by people all over the world, you would start it with a larger number of nodes right off the bat. And we can skip that next command, Ronnie, which is just to kind of see those instances, just a verification. So the next command that we'll be doing as soon as our cluster is built is the container clusters get credentials. And again, this is just making sure that we have the appropriate permissions. Then you notice what's gonna happen. We then transition to our cube control commands. So now, all of a sudden, we are truly doing Kubernetes commands at that point in order to create a pod and to deploy our application into the Kubernetes engine. So this is pretty cool. So Ronnie, I think you've got on the clipboard now the gcloud container clusters get credentials command. That's great because that's what we're going to need on the clipboard for our next step. And I'll tell you what we'll do now. We'll just take a quick TV timeout. And when we return in this video, our cluster will be built for the Kubernetes engine. And then we can go ahead and deploy and test our application. Well, all right, that didn't take that long. Uh, we took a TV timeout and it finished in like 30 <laughs> seconds. Uh, you never know. And remember that happened relatively quickly because we only have a two node cluster. All right, Ronnie, we're ready to get those credentials updated. And there we go. So we're gonna make sure we have the right credentials in place. And now we are gonna transition to our Kubernetes commands. So we're gonna do a deployment of Kubernetes hello web. And notice we then tell it exactly where the container is, that Docker container that we built to create this hello web deployment. So Ronnie's got that on the clipboard. He's now gonna slide over to the cloud shell. He is going to use his cube control command in order to create our deployment. Notice we're dealing with a very simple little microservice here that does our hello world. So this is very quick. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, do the uh, cube control get pods. 
this command is something that we're definitely going to want to ensure. Like this is a, a key verification at this point. I wouldn't skip this verification just to make sure that everything we've done up to this point is working properly and we've got our web application properly hosted inside of Kubernetes engine. Nice. All right, what's next? We are going to expose this solution to the public internet. And we are going to load balance across a port 80 access for this app. So we are now making this available to the public internet, this solution. And again, you note that we use a Kubernetes command in order to do that. And then once we've exposed it properly to the World Wide Web, we are going to verify one more time. And then notice we won't do this in the video, but I do have two last commands in the script for you. And those would automate you cleaning all of this up. So you would be deleting all of this stuff. Now, Ronnie, what's interesting here is the external IP address for our Hello Web app it's pending. Yeah, so if you could run the get service command again, it should give us an external IP after a brief delay. And there you go, Roddy. Yeah, you, you, uh, when you selected external IP, it put it on the clipboard, didn't it? <laughs> yes. So um, I'll just talk through while we're waiting for that IP here, just kind of a review of what we've just done. I know it's been a lot, but you saw how easy it was to do. We went and we grabbed this Hello World application and we made a Docker container out of this app. And then we built a cluster of nodes to serve this up via Kubernetes inside of Google Cloud Platform. And then we deployed that container to the Kubernetes cluster. And then we made it available to the entire internet. And any second now, we're going to get that external IP address. And that, of course, is going to allow us to test this wonderful application. And look at that, Ronnie. There's our external IP. So you can grab that onto your clipboard and you can give us a new tab in your browser and you can paste that address in and it will use port 80 by default. And there is our incredible Hello World application that is available this second. We're going to delete it right after the video. But this second, it's available all over the world. Nice. And it is hosted in none other than the Kubernetes engine of Google Cloud Platform. I want to thank Ronnie so much for helping me with this demonstration and, of course, for being my co-presenter throughout all of the Google Cloud Platform episodes here at IT Pro TV. And I am so thrilled that you joined us for this episode of What the Pros Know. I'm Anthony Sequeira with IT Pro TV. I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can watch more great content like this one.